Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the 2024 Land Rover Discovery Sport. This is actually the D200 Dynamic SE variant 5 plus 2. 5 plus 2 because it's actually a 7-seater but Land Rover does not call it a 7-seater. Yes, it is a long name for what is Land Rover's cheapest model. Yes, this is the entry-level Land Rover model and this is the key of the vehicle which is the same as other Land Rover models. Unlock the car, lock the car. This is to turn on the light, this is to open the boot and this is to turn on the hazards. Meanwhile, the car actually has a lot of gloss black finishing and it has become quite a lot of value for money now. So so yes, this could be a better alternative when compared to the Mercedes GLC and the BMW X3. Now straight away, let's open the engine bay because it's quite interesting how they have done the air intake for this car because it pulls in air from somewhere here. So it pulls it from there, pushes it from there and puts it right inside here. So this is something I've not really seen in many cars but that's very nicely done Land Rover. Okay, you can see and feel that this is a diesel engine because the vibrations are obviously there and this is so glossy, I don't know what. Someone has actually polished it and I love the fact that they have put this sort of material to prevent heat from whatever but yes they have put some thought here in the engine bay which is a good thing earlier they just used Ford engine so they didn't really use their brains much there's insulation here where does the washer fluid go in I can't even find that that's so freaking hidden anyways let's shut the engine bay and let me tell you that there's a lot of gloss all across so there's gloss here Land Rover badging right there there's discovery which again is finished in piano black in fact this piano black finishing here on the bumper as well. This is fake. Why is it fake? I have no clue at all. This is functional, obviously. In fact, there's a functional air curtain here to draw in air and maybe for some aerodynamics as well. That is the towing hook. It gets headlight washers. Wow! Because that's a feature. Some expensive Land Rover models like the Vela don't get it anymore. But you do not get Matrix LED headlights because that's available in the HSC trim, which is not available in India. This is the SE trim, which is standard equipment. HSC is high standard equipment. All LED lights, dynamic swipe indicators look really very cool, obviously. And coming to the side, I realized that gloss black has been extended all the way. So it goes all throughout the car, which is a good thing, but is prone to scratches obviously the length is almost 4.6 meters the wheelbase is slightly more than 2.7 meters so yeah the wheelbase is quite long and the size of the tires 235 55 19 so yes these are 19 inches but the hsc gets 20 inches hsc not available in india red colored brake calipers alloy wheel design is finally better so they have updated the design of the alloy wheels yay you get six parking sensors at the front it says discovery here which is not very visible because it's the same as the body color and it also projects a silhouette of the car on the ground at night when you obviously unlock the vehicle you get request sensors on all the doors it says Land Rover right here and this is a diesel obviously so you have to put urea here you get the drill meanwhile if you opt for the accessory of having roof rails it can take up to 75 kgs of weight there is a RS5 which is going very loudly there I, I think this has become a racetrack right now anyways ground clearance seems decent this car looks and feels more SUV than its rivals for sure and when you come to the rear you will appreciate that there are dynamic swipe indicators here as well and this is I think the discovery sort of a logo meanwhile the car looks very similar from the rear again they have splashed so much gloss black now it's crazy these are the rear fog lights meanwhile you get parking sensors and you get four parking sensors at the rear let me count one two three four no, six parking sensors at the rear. You get a rear wiper washer. It is not hidden like in the case of Range Rovers. High mounted stop lamp. There's a camera here for the clear side camera. That is a shark fin antenna. Yeah, the usual thing where sport is written here. Let me show you the underbody because that is the exhaust. It gets dual exhaust on the left side. Spare wheel is not an alloy. It seems to be a smaller size as well. And there you can see the underpinnings. Yes, very nicely done Land Rover because it gets sort of a diffuser treatment here, which is of no use, honestly. There's a towing hook right there. Let's open the boot. Before that, let me show you the camera, which also gets a spray function to clean the camera. That's kind of cool. Straight away, let's open the boot. Now, this is a 5 plus 2. But the problem is the parcel shelf has no place to be kept. So once you remove the parcel shelf to make it a 7-seater, the parcel shelf has to be left on the road like this, hoping nobody would steal it. And right now, I've actually put this seat all the way behind. That seat is completely upright and all the way ahead. Actually, let me show it to you because seat like that, it's impossible for me to put the last two rows up. So firstly, this is the maximum legroom. That is the minimum legroom. This is completely upright. This is completely reclined. And there seems to be good amount of space here. The space is not an issue. Under thigh support is a slight issue though. Headroom seems to be adequate enough. There's a hook here, handle, light, and no height adjustable seat belts. Another hook right there says Meridian Sound. Scooped out seat back, magazine holders, provision to put an iPad as well with a USB charging socket too. You have got controls for the air conditioning at the rear and you've got two USB-C charging sockets, a 12 volt charging socket, some storage space here, AC vent placement here, but I really don't understand how this particular thing works right now. There's a slight hump, which isn't that bad. But yes, the cabin is quite spacious at the rear. So yes, good amount of 
interior room which makes it a practical five seater at least is it a practical seven seater i will show you right now says airbag here says airbag almost everywhere possible so first things first i'm going to yeah make the seat a bit upright in fact i can split the seat into 60 40 and i think i can split this also so it becomes 40 20 40 and then it gets isofix child seat mounts as well let's move this seat ahead ah! yeah it is a bit of an effort obviously material quality and all is nice it gets this wood treatment too nice double stitching as well and feels very robust so let's put this seat up and there you go so now it becomes a six seater and now it becomes a seven seater it also has proper headrest i can just put them up like this now if you notice boot spaces become really very small this is the warning triangle there are some things kept right here which obviously is the toolkit of the vehicle including a jack i don't know where rose is right now but yes that practicality bit is also there problem is that there's no space as such okay a kid can fit in right there you get two cup holders as well you get blower controls that's right you get blower controls right here so yes the person sitting in the last row at least has some control meanwhile you also get a usb-c charging socket right there problem is under thigh support is really very poor getting into the last row is also very difficult if i just pull this like this there it folds and yeah there it falls down as well the interesting part is there are buttons right here which means if I press this button, I can put the seat down to the only thing is the headrest is colliding right now. So it's a namesake seven seater, obviously, because to get inside, this thing does not fold. Oh, God, this acrobat I have to keep doing today. Now, hopefully this will fold right now. Let's do this. <laughs> Come on, fall. Yeah. Now to get into the last row, how do I do that? I have to climb from certain places. Kaise guzum hai? Oh, God, this is one of the worst way of having a seven seater because the seat doesn't really tumble now this seat is on the floor completely in fact it's so much on the floor let me show you the under thigh yeah <laughs> what is this <laughs> it is absolutely terrible place to be in i just feel like someone has put a gun on my head and be like bad jahan bhai ac vent here so at least you can cool when you have no space light placement here on the top but no usb c on this side there is one on that side i don't know what is the logic you get a 12 volt charging socket but what is this space I can move this seat ahead using this lever. Yeah, it pushes ahead. And then I get outside. So yes, it becomes quite difficult to enter and exit the car. But for a car of this price, there should have been a sun blind here. But unfortunately, there is none. Oh my God, this has been really very difficult today. Hat tip I'm giving you guys right now. Do not, and I repeat, do not drink Bon Vita because then you cannot sit in the last row of the Discovery Sport. Where do I keep this? This is such a challenge, na? They should have given it some space at least to keep this. But anyways, abhi filal ke jugaad ke I'll keep it like that. I'm scared it might just get stolen. And obviously, it gets a power tailgate as well. And there, it shuts. Car looks very similar to how it looked before. So even though this is sort of a facelift because the interior has changed quite a lot, it doesn't really feel very different when compared to before which is a bit disappointing they could have really made a lot more changes to the car and how do i know what variant it is it says dynamic sc sport d200 along with the engine vehicle number whatever you get two cameras here and a sensor for automatic wipers those are for lane keep assist i believe i'm not sure if this car has adas or not but it has this sort of a panel here which is finished in piano black i don't even understand the logic behind that but it is there it does not have d200 written anywhere on the body no trim level is mentioned either and the fog lamps are actually very low down so that is actually the fog lamp it's like really down, so you really can't see it. That's the reason I missed it on first go. Now let's get inside. This is 12-way power adjust. That is 10-way power adjust. The HSC actually has 14-way power adjust and obviously memory seats. So we're going to move the seat there. And um, the seats are actually nice and comfortable. They were stiff earlier, long back, but I think they have made certain improvements to it. So it's not all that bad. It even says discovery here. The problem is this car does not get ambient lighting. It only gets footwheel lighting, which is white color, which comes right there, obviously. Get a proper dead pedal. That is to open the boot of the vehicle. And what is this? I don't know. It's sort of a dummy. Just to open the hood of the vehicle. This car has almost no buttons. Yeah, they have removed almost everything. So the big change has happened right here. What has Land Rover actually done? Land Rover has gone and removed all the buttons. So the pre-facelifted model actually had a whole panel for air conditioning controls and some physical buttons as well. They also had two rotary dials for the air conditioning control. All that has been removed and thrown right in the bin because now it is too simple and too minimalistic which is good and bad as well good because it looks really nice bad because you have to press multiple buttons to get into certain menu which is not that easy and recently ncap has also mentioned that cars with physical buttons they perform better in terms of safety so this is a step back for sure the glove box is decent size but why is there this five rupee 
first aid kit i simply don't understand there's a pen holder here as well beautifully lined on the inside the whole quality of the dashboard the wood treatment everything looks nice in fact the dashboard looks really very nice i love the design of the dashboard it's big it's nice it's huge that's what she said <laughs> meanwhile here you get a cubby hole meanwhile you get a wireless charging pad here two usb c charging sockets this car has multiple usb c charging sockets two cup holders and this thing it does not move ahead or behind a usb c charging socket here as well there's good amount of storage inside again this is very well lined and then i can open this take it home so it makes it a very big under armrest storage which is very nice indeed the gear lever is now shorter and smaller the initial models actually had a rotary dial which used to come up on startup that was super cool that is gone all the drama from this car is slowly and surely going away because the earlier system was so much better there was also a volume knob now in order to increase or decrease the volume i will have to rely on this now this steering wheel is adjustable both for reach as well as rake manual of course and you get paddle shifters the steering wheel is also new earlier it was sort of vertical now they have made changes here controls for the cruise control these are the buttons to alter a lot of things like the audio system as well as that screen which has plenty of information now i can get into few things right here and change a lot of things i can change the display layout if i want so it's not the easiest to use i'll just get into the one dial one this is similar to what we have seen in a lot of other land rover models and then i can obviously make changes to what i'm seeing on various panels as well but it's not very reassuring to use why can't they just have one single button which lets me make changes as and when i wish but yeah that's not the case this is for the volume controller let's actually listen to some audio audio quality is actually very good it has to be because meridian sound system here now this screen is not very difficult to use but yeah, i miss physical controls obviously so you can just browse through here it has got slope assist it has got compass wheel info weight sensing it has got 600 mm of water weight capacity driving style 55% 17.8 liters per 100 km that's terrible honestly and then i can get into this menu there's apple carplay which is wireless now android auto there's a valet mode so in case you're giving your car for valet you can just ensure that nobody misuses the car and only drives it at a certain speed and the speed does not exceed meanwhile there has to be some physical control here because it's not that easy to use the camera is fantastic look at the quality of the camera it is actually very impressive the way the camera is and there there's a m340i there's obviously a skoda a skoda is always everywhere because it tries to hang out with bigger cars meanwhile there is a 500 there is the audi rs5 so uh, i don't know what is happening today anyways the camera quality is fantastic you got multiple views here for the 360 degree parking camera and the good thing is that it has got the clear side camera as well so there it is i don't know why someone or the other is always in the camera walking driving past you get navigation which is fantastic in terms of quality so usual land rover affair nothing new here air conditioning control is easy just press this button and then you can turn on the air conditioning obviously physical control would be really nice air conditioning is an absolute chiller here they get into the drive modes these are the drive modes and then you have got a lot of functions a little confusing but you'll get the hang of it with time obviously so here i can change the various drive modes it's not showing me all the drive modes so i have to press some other button somewhere else get into this setting thing and then you can decide what you want so there are a lot of settings to go into this is the one actually this is to make changes to the audio system but this is the one there are so many of them this can get a bit confusing honestly but this is an 11.4 inch pv pro touch screen which is good because the size has increased from before earlier it was a 10.25 inch unit now obviously it has become bigger but it's just not adequate enough i think it's a step back going all digital in terms of the design or the, of the center console there has to be physical controls period no two ways about it automatic wipers automatic headlights obviously this is the engine start button and the cabin feels and looks very clean this is for the light just touch it and the light gets activated which is a very cool thing and i think somebody is not bothered to remove the plastic sheet here also uh, i will try ah uh, there it is meanwhile you obviously get a mirror here but light has to be activated manually that is a microphone there is a handle to hold on to here same in the case there as well meanwhile it actually gets a massive panoramic not a sunroof but a moonroof because this does not open it's like you have not paid all the money or not the full money that land rover does not let you open this so this is kind of pointless i don't know why land rover does such weird stuff but 
yeah that opens brings in a lot of airiness inside but it should at least open that is the whole concept of having a glass on the roof that it should open but no land rover is like nahi nahi khulega jo karna hai kar lo anyways that's all so the dashboard obviously looks cleaner now and you get trip information and all that i'll keep changing the instrument cluster more so you can see that while driving but there's a lot of information here there's a lot of information here also but it's a little confusing not that i really care about it as soon as i turn on and off the vehicle it actually shows me this sort of an effect right there ho ja kar de effect i don't know why it does not react in front of the camera but let's just shut the door somehow i think the car is just not in the mood today and there i will lock the car as soon as i do that it shows me this sort of effect here with land rover written right there it automatically closes the sun blind as well so i'm just going to keep this button pressed and see that if it opens or rolls down the windows it does it rolls down all the windows it also opens the sun blind of the vehicle but that's about it let's start driving right away All right, let's turn on the car straight away. It rose to life. We get into drive and off we go. Okay, air conditioning is on. So I'm going to get into this. I'm going to turn off the air conditioning. Now we're going to do a sort of a rolling start. I'll tell you why. Let's get out of this menu because it's very confusing. It's going to take me a lot of time to set up all this. So I thought let's do it on the go. First things first. Let me get into the mode setting here and let me tell you that there are multiple drive modes. So in terms of off-road modes, obviously it has got grass, gravel, snow. It has got mud ruts. It's got sand. It has got auto, which it can auto select. I know it's in comfort mode. We are going to come out of comfort mode and I'm going to put this car into dynamic. mode there's a eco mode as well and when i get dynamic mode now it says dynamic program selected it also makes this cluster a bit red there and straight away we are going to come into the traction control which means that i have to get in right here so it's a i mean very confusing i don't know for what reason before that let me actually show you a very cool thing about this car which is getting into this particular setting i hate the way the air conditioning uh, controls have been done so it has got a pm 2.5 air filter as well which is a cool thing so we have to actually turn off the air conditioning mm, i am so confused today what are we up to anyways we come out of this and i come into something known as tr modes wherein i can turn off traction control and then it makes that sound to tell me the traction control has been turned off and i'm going to come into the menu i'm going to turn on the camera system here because the camera is super cool in this car and uh, we are straight away going to come to this particular road on the right this is very dusty road today so we're just going to use the wiper straight away lot of spray on offer and off we go the engine does rev fast which is quite surprising i didn't expect the engine to rev this fast for a diesel it does rev quite fast especially in neutral na to it is in a big hurry there you can hear a bit of the tire screech as well so this is a 2 liter diesel engine which is known as the d200 which is obviously 200 horsepower and 430 newton meters of torque between 1750 to 2500 rpm so the torque output is the same as before because i remember the previous discovery sport which i drove in 2020 was actually the d180 with 180 horsepower so i think 20 horsepower boost has happened that time they also had something known as the d240 i think which had 240 horsepower but now obviously there is none of that globally i'm talking about in india obviously we get the least power we get the least torque i don't know why we have given this treatment considering that jaguar land rover is actually owned by an indian company yet we get the basic of uh, variants and features and engine and power and performance and all that so that is something which i'm simply not able to understand but anyways like i was telling you in terms of performance of uh, us we'll do this transparent bonnet camera which is also super cool mercedes is making a lot of hue and cry about transparent bonnet this has been done by land rover since donkey's years and it obviously works fantastically well because look at the software working so nicely you can see that very clearly as well don The horn is nice actually it has to be and I love the fact that you can just put your hand up here and control the power windows if i press this button together both the buttons it will actually shut the outside rear view mirror both of them and then i can adjust the mirror controls from here let's turn on the clear sight camera as well so like i was telling you this car produces 200 horsepower and it makes 430 newton meters of torque which is the same as before uh, the torque output is the same as before it feels punchy in the mid range there is a lag lower down so it doesn't get off the line very quickly so there is that resistance that the hesitation is definitely there when you launch this car aggressively but total everything is good hard acceleration there is that hesitation at lower down so yes turbo lag is there quite a lot of turbo lag is there in this car but the mid range is really nice top end is quite lacking so like i was telling you that uh, this car has seen a 
slight bump in power by 20 horsepower and it also gets the mild hybrid system which is kind of useless it only adds weight to the car nothing else actually that mild hybrid system now other than adding weight it also does torque assist because this car is 1.5 seconds faster when compared to the d180 how is that possible with just a 20 horsepower boost i think there's torque assist with this mild hybrid system so this car is actually making oh my god i'm becoming very horny today <laughs> but there's a lot of traffic all around and horn is your safety feature in the indian traffic conditions however let me tell you that it goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 8.6 seconds no it does not that is for the five seater variant this is the seven seater which weighs 79 kgs more this goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 8.9 seconds which is 0 0.3 seconds slower 79 kg slowing down the car by 0 0.3 seconds the maths is not mathing today completely because it makes no sense at all in fact uh, this is 1.5 seconds faster when compared to before however the petrol which is actually the p250 it produces 250 horsepower isn't that obvious it makes 365 newton meters of torque and that car goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour 0 0.8 second faster now again 0 0.3 seconds slower if it is the seven seater variant so that is obviously the engine of choice because that's more refined this is not the most refined it does sound a bit gruffy at certain speeds so there is the diesel clatter here obviously but how is there a speed limit of 20 kilometers per hour on this road I the speed limit does not make any sense only in certain places anyways like i was telling you performance is actually good this car will go from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour forget that i have already told you this i was talking about the petrol yeah forget the petrol also because the petrol is slightly cheaper but we'll come to the pricing in a bit the thing is that the top speed of this car is 209 kilometers per hour the petrol has a top speed of 225 kilometers per hour because the petrol seems to be the better bet it has 250 horsepower obviously it is lighter also because petrol engines are obviously lighter this weighs around 2000 kg somewhere around that but it doesn't feel heavy it does feel right and the performance is not going to blow your mind but it gets the job done globally though they also have a p300e right now which is a plug-in hybrid and that plug-in hybrid can charge in 30 minutes using a dc fast charger that car goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 6.6 .6 seconds so that is quick the discovery sport obviously gets four wheel drive a lot of drive modes it's quite capable of the road and obviously it has the driving feel as well something its rivals don't offer so like the mercedes glc or the bmw x3 they feel suv versions of say the c-class and the 3 series respectively this car definitely feels more suv in comparison it definitely feels a lot better and i definitely enjoy driving this especially around the corners now it feels quite reassuring obviously there's a lot of body roll firstly the suspension is soft it's quite soft a suspension which means that the ride is very nice only thing is certain bumps now affect the car but for the most part the ride feels absolutely fantastic and what a corner what a curve what a bridge what fun driving this car right here and body roll is obviously in plenty i can feel the roll i can feel there's a lot of roll here but at least everything feels quite well contained now i don't know what road this is is this the atal thetu of course but what i can tell you is there's a clown coming right ahead in the opposite direction with full enthusiasm what's wrong with you dude <laughs> So performance is something which is okay not the best because there's slight weight which you can feel in this car and that weight kind of bogs it down the engine feels a bit gruffy so it has that feel for sure and i think today i'm going to take a lot of time to reach home because i have climbed the atal c2 which is a very 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 long bridge indeed I've changed the cluster mode here. Let's change the camera view as well. Car is turned off because of stop start system. We get into sport mode for the gearbox and off we go. Hazards off. It redlines slightly under 5000 rpm. It depends on its mode. Usually it redlines below 5000 rpm only. So it's not a very high revving engine as such. But by diesel standards, this engine is very impressive. Now that P300E, which is obviously not available in India, plug-in hybrid, that makes 309 horsepower and 540 newton meters of torque. Obviously because of the battery, it weighs a lot more. But that is a car which we need in India because the efficiency would be mind-bogglingly phenomenal. Now this car is underpinned by the premium transverse architecture, which is the new platform which came in 2019 actually so it's the same as the Range Rover Evoque so with the facelift now the previous the first facelift which they did with this car they actually changed the platform only which is unbelievable right and obviously a nip and tuck here and there it drives really well in fact the performance and all is uh, very nice because you get that feel you're driving a Land Rover you feel you're driving a Land Rover and that is the best thing about this car the feel the feel is definitely there and when compared to other rivals which kind of feel meek and not that rugged this car definitely feels a lot better and I like the the fact that the gearbox is smooth in terms of shifts it's not the fastest shifting it's a nine speed torque converter automatic gearbox there's also six speed manual globally not in india though and you've got paddle shifters which lets you make shifts if you want to take control of the gas but it will take the revs all the way to almost 5000 rpm 
Yeah, look at that. The engine is revving like crazy. However, let me be honest. I don't think it holds on to a gear. There is no manual mode. The gearbox has a D or an S mode. So either you get into drive or you get into sport. That's about it. You can't do anything other than that. And look at this engine rev. No, it does hold on to a gear. It's holding it slightly below 5000 RPM. That's impressive. I really like that. I like the fact that uh, this engine is a little gruffy. So it's not the most refined, but I like the sound. I definitely like the sound. So the ride is very good. The handling is so-so. The steering offers decent feel. It is on the heavier side, but it does offer you feel and feedback. Doesn't feel hairy. And it's a car you actually enjoy driving somehow. And it feels more robust than say a Mercedes GLC, which actually brings me to the pricing of this car. Now, this car is priced around rupees 82 lakhs. In fact, both the petrol and the diesel are priced exactly the same. And even the Evoque is priced exactly the same. Yeah, there is no difference between the pricing of these four things, which is two variants of this car and two variants of the Evoque. They are identical, freaking identical, which is quite unbelievable how they have given it the exact same price. So if you want less practicality and more flamboyance, then definitely the Evoque is the car for you. But this car is a lot more practical, feels a more, lot more rugged, but the Evoque feels a bit chintum into and that's one of the reasons why the new generation, the second generation of the Evoque hasn't sold in the numbers, which the first generation model obviously got because people also upgraded. Nah? So everyone ended up buying the Villar and nobody bought the Evoque. I really don't see the Evoque on the roads at all. But trust me, this Discovery Sport definitely deserves to sell in a lot better numbers. The sales are very underwhelming. This is a very underrated car. It is very capable of the road. It is something which Land Rover has told me not to take off road. I don't know why because they're like something can get damaged and all they're a little cautious with that but yes this car can do a lot obviously the ground cleanse isn't the best water weighting capacity is 600 mm which is decent enough brakes are also quite strong here all right let's start driving right away and then i've also changed the cluster mode to the full map view here okay we are in manual mode and that's the reason why this engine is arriving like crazy Actually, this map view is not that great, but the way the map has been done is amazing. Look at the quality of the maps. By the way, we just should get out of manual mode because it's just revving, revving and revving like crazy. Traction control is off, but does not spin its wheels at all because obviously four wheel drive system, which channels more power to the front wheel, I think, <laughs> because that's how it feels when you're driving the car. There is no understeer as such, obviously, unless and until you go near limit, but this is not a car which will egg you or egg you to push to the limit because obviously it is uh, not having that dynamic feel to it because of the soft suspension and it's not supposed to have a dynamic feel either. Funnily enough, it doesn't have a sport mode, it has a dynamic mode which actually alters the engine. I think the gearbox also gets altered and it also alters the steering wheel. That's about it, adding a little bit more weight to it. But this car is available only in one variant which is the SE Dynamic. Globally, there's an HSE also which is high standard equipment. What is the difference? Well, the high standard equipment obviously gets more weight adjust for the seats. It gets cooling and ventilation for the seats as well it also gets 20 inch wheels here we are having 19 inch wheels it also gets matrix led headlights so it gets a lot more features but we are not getting that trim in india now in terms of pricing i was saying the price is the same but there's a slight difference in the pricing because for diesel now registration cost is slightly more so this car ends up being priced at rupees 82.18 lakhs meanwhile the petrol is 1.39 lakhs cheaper at around 80.79 lakhs and uh, obviously x showroom and all is the same like i was already telling you land was actually cut the price by around rupees 5 lakhs which is quite crazy huh and that's something which I definitely appreciate because now this car's pricing is a lot more value for money. Yeah, the pricing is amazingly value for money. This doesn't have forward collision warning or any of these ADA systems, I believe. Instead, it will remind you if you feel sleepy. So it has this driver alert monitor. Now, the reduction in price has really made the value for money appeal of this car go through the roof because the GLC is rupees 8 lakhs more expensive. Doesn't make any sense at all. Meanwhile, the X3 is rupees 5.5 lakhs more expensive. So if I was in the market to buy a car in this segment, I would definitely be inclined towards this Discovery Sport because it offers quite a lot of bang for the buck. Yes, the screen is not the best, but you probably can get used to it. But at least it offers you the SUV feel, which some of its rivals really don't do as good as the Land Rover Discovery Sport. Anyways, this car was first launched in 2014. It replaced the Freelander. The Freelander was actually quite a good car because it was priced much more aggressively. When I look at it now, obviously that time it felt expensive, but inflation is a real 
right now in india it was launched i think in 2015 2019 they gave it a facelift and that also meant that they changed the platform to the one on the evoke the second generation evoke in 2020 i think it was launched in india and this is jago land rover stop selling model yeah this is jago what am i saying why am i eating my words so this is jago land rover stop selling model but i have only one problem with this car it is on sale since 10 years without many major updates i know the platform has changed but other than that yeah the design looks more or less the same as before so it's kind of feeling dated now they could make a lot more changes on the exterior front i know the interior looks quite nice and funky obviously the screen is something which is a love it or a hate it if you are the person who likes minimalistic stuff you probably would like it but then considering safety this is a bit of a distraction you have to press multiple buttons here and there and then only you are able to operate it but now it is time for the brake test which means ah our brakes could be better yeah it makes too much sound And here we go. That sound you're listening now from the rear, it actually is the sound of the warning triangle going from right to left and all. So it's not very secure in that regard and that's something which Jaguar Land Rover sorry Land Rover did not think about at all why do I keep dragging Jaguar all the time because Jaguar is surviving because of Land Rover Jaguar doesn't really sell cars now they decided to drop the XC the XF and the XJ has already dropped they're dropping the sedans and they're like we're going to be making only electric cars and they're going to make a lot of SUVs but what is the sense when Land Rover is doing the same so there's a lot of confusion happening between Jaguar and Land Rover but I feel that Jaguar as a forget this is not about Jaguar this is about Land Rover Land Rover makes some fantastic cars and the Discovery Sport is quite impressive as well so if you like this vlog make sure to give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon by the way the attention to detail here is so cool now that if i give an indicator it actually shows me that there as well only thing is the color of the car is red the color of the car here is gray or silver or whatever what is the sense in that i don't understand but anyways if you like bye yaar bas karo